Whoa! Ooh. Hello. Tonight we shall determine what is the best scary Nintendo video game ever released. Or a scary game you can get on a Nintendo product. I think that's what I said. Close enough. Regardless, cue the music! Whoa! It's time for the show. What show, you ask? Show with Ted. Hello there, Internet. Welcome to the Avengers Guild. And this is another lovely episode of Show and Tell. I'm not frozen, I'm just messing. Do you know why we're saying it like that? Because this is a special Friday the 13th episode of Show and Tell. Whip! That's right today, Friday the 13th. Wait, it, wait, wait a second. What, what's that above our heads? Is, is that the date that this video came out? That, Oh, that's embarrassing. That doesn't say. That doesn't say the thirteenth. Yeah, we tried. Hold on. Let's rewind. This is Friday the thirteenth. Probably do something on the post so it doesn't look ridiculous. Yeah, look that. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this was filmed on Friday the thirteenth. I don't know true. what date this is, but I know for darn sure it's after that. Look at my watch. It's smart. <laughs> it's, oh, not even on. All right, look you at my watch. It says it. So as, as we said in the introductory bumper. Uh, today's episode is about the uh, the best scary game available on a Nintendo platform. So see, we me and Steve were kind of discussing. Nintendo is not known for the horror, and we figured for any Nintendo fans and horror fans, we would give some choices that you might want to hear that are pretty good scary games on the Nintendo system. So again, we're using the word horror horror uh, loosely so it could be a scary ish game it could be a super scary game it just has to fit the scary slash horror genre to some extent I'm and again on nintendo platforms because we like nintendo we do like nintendo a few quick very quick things to uh say before we get to the nuts and bolts um we always on these episodes go over our recent polls so uh, on our completely free, uh, focused gamer discussion group at guildhallforum.com, we recently... Such a good forum. It is. It's fantastic. We recently had a poll for what was the best DC movie, D any DC movie ever made. I didn't win. He did not win. Uh, spoiler alert, it was Batman in 1989. 1989. Ooh, I can't talk. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that won, but... Steve destroyed me. The poll winner of the prize was randomized. All you had to do was vote in the poll to be entered to win. And the winner of the $5 N N Nintendo eShop card, and they've already received their prize, so they already know, but for anyone who didn't know, was Mr. Rowan the Guilty, a.k.a. Rowan Flamerhead. Ooh. So congratulations on your $5 gift card. And if you're watching this, someone who's not Rowan, and you want to win a $5 gift card, then you should participate on... At guildhallforum.com. <laughs> it's fun. It's fantastic. <laughs> On to our next uh, interesting tidbit. We now have a Patreon. That is right. We have an awesome Patreon with a whole cool list of things you can get for either a $3 Patreon or a $5 Patreon donation on a monthly basis, including everything from access to our super fun Discord, uh, to custom titles on our forums, to discounts on merch, and behind the scenes footage behind the scenes videos oh, so and a bunch good. of other stuff and speaking of merch segue into our last quick thing Ooh. we also have a cool merch shop that is a nice you shirt you have get, on oh Steve. this came from the merch shop oh you man. know what else you can get from the merch shop you can get this or this oh and you can also even get this wow that is it's just crazy okay that's a lot of stuff so now on to the topic at hand what are we doing again Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> first thing I'm doing, because I'm a good husband, shout out to my wife. It was her birthday this past week. Love you. Hi, I like you. You're fun. Fair enough. Second off, we're talking about our Nintendo choices. Correct. So, me and Steve are going to do something fun, because mm -hmm. neither of us really own physical copies. We're mm -hmm. on that digital mm -hmm. age. Mm -hmm. So, both of us went digital on each game we have. I could make up something or anything like that, but I think we're going to... Uh, Show you another way what our favorite games are. Indeed, because we are super advanced with very high-end CGI. 
Mm. Mm. All right. So, shall we reveal our games? I say so. Okay. Ready. Here we go. From the depths of... You know what? I don't care. From the depths of hell. That's right. I said hell on a, on a family-friendly channel. <laughs> we got... Oh, no strings attached anymore. We're unhinged. Three, two, one. <laughs> I have picked Luigi's Mansion 3. Ooh, what a good choice. I know. And what does yours say? I can clearly read it because this is not CGI. Obviously it says Resident Evil Revelations Collection on the Nintendo Switch. It does say that. I just read it right there because wow. it's totally there. Man, that is a good choice. You wouldn't think Luigi's Mansion... One, it's got creepy elements. It sure it's does. It's got a green guy. Luigi by himself is scary. You know what I mean? That is a fun choice for all ages. It is. Thank you for doing my take for me. Now I'm going to do yours. Resident Evil. You know, there's some some zombies. <laughs> okay, now, let's go ahead and do it. Do you want to go first, or should I go first? Let's see. Since you have the more Nintendo-ish game, I say I get my little pitch out the way. Okay, go ahead. There it is hey, over there. since this is, like, scary, maybe we should do our pitches in a Batman voice. Someone like you. Somewhere around the cages. <laughs> yeah, I really hurt. That's okay, good. on second thought, that's a terrible right. plan. Let's use our normal voices. So, Resident Evil Revelations 2 on the Nintendo Switch, um, or 1, it's a collection of both Resident Evil Revelation games. Um, if anybody's a Resident Evil fan out there, like I am, I do like some Biohazard. <laughs> that's what it's called in Japan. All right, we'll just edit that out. I didn't know that. Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> uh, Revelations was a game that originally came out on DS. Do you know what that is? That is. A, do I know what the DS yeah. is? Uh, Did you show, know the DS stands for dual screen? Yes. Of course he knows. Which Continue. show the really the hardware and the the processing power of a DS because it was a 3D game. It was an over shoulder angled game and it was really good. Um, they followed it up with a release on the Wii U. And the PlayStation 3, and then the game did well enough where it went for a sequel on the PS4 and Xbox One called Revelations 2. But Nintendo, never being far behind, was like, you know what we're going to do? We're going to do a collection. You can get one and two for the low price of, I don't know how much it is, probably 40 on the Switch. And I think it's an incredible deal because both those Resident Evil games are incredible. Uh, I prefer Revelations 2, but one is really fun. Well, why is it so good, Jesse? Thanks, Steve. Why is it so good, Jesse? I'm sorry, I was still stuck in the Nintendo's Never Far Behind thing. I mean, I do love Nintendo, but, uh... How's our online service doing? <laughs> can you voice chat yet? Oh, wait, I have a yes, cell phone. Yes, you can. Boop, boop, boop. Boop. Hello, can we play Splatoon together? All right, fair enough. And we're British uh, also. <laughs> but how, let's just... do a British Batman. That's <laughs> uh, a jolly good, got a jolly good time. <laughs> Oh my god. Alfred, I disagree is, with you. This has gone off the rails. But continue. Anyway, yeah, we're going to interrupt you 45 times too. <laughs> anyway, so what I like about this game is anybody knows Resident Evil kind of fell off on its um, its format. Uh, starting with really with 4, they cha they took zombies out completely and made it more of an action-oriented video game. Same thing with 5. 5 introduced co-op, which kind of... Defeats the whole purpose of being scary when you can play with somebody else. Wait, there, there was no zombies in a Resident Evil game? Yeah, Resident Evil 4 was Lost Parasitos. Ah. They were parasitic humans. And gotcha. They get at you and said, Ooh, another one! And they spoke in Spanish. Wow. Um, Resident Evil 5, same thing. And then Resident Evil 6, they did bring some zombies back into it, but majority of the game, you're fighting individuals with guns, and it was, it was a complete action game. Go back to this low key res, res, ugh, Resident Evil Revelations. There's a lot of R's here, man. Right. Anyway, uh, it goes back to that form of slow paced, terrifying monsters, overwhelmed, not enough ammo. The first game takes place on this small cruise ship. Uh, you go around the corner, and there's just this nasty monster, kind of slimy, Silent Hill like type of thing coming at you. You have to search for ammo everywhere in the game. That brings back characters like Jill Valentine, Chris Redfield to play as. Introduces a few new characters in the game that you can either like or dislike. And it's just, it brings like back that. Like YouTube? Huh? Like you, can, like, like you can like like them or dislike them like on YouTube? Exactly. But it really brings <laughs> back that claustrophobic feel to a Resident Evil game. And then let's jump to Revelations 2, which brings back one of my favorite characters. Barry Burton, which hasn't been seen ah, yes, since Barry Burton. Yes, he hasn't been seen since Resident Evil One. Sure hasn't. 
And I mean, and he almost let Jill come a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get that at all. I haven't played these. All right, Jill. Wow. I mean, sandwich. What, what is this? Rev okay, continue. Yes. Man, you just lost 17 people with that. I've never heard of Earth. He'll turn this off. Congratulations on this video being the most thumbs down video we've ever had. That's right. <laughs> Uh, fast forward though, uh, you play as Barry, uh, Claire's back in the game, Barry's daughter. Thank God. There is many of throwbacks to the first one, I don't want to ruin a good joke for you, but I do throw a throwback joke from the first game. And same thing, most of it takes place on this, or all the game takes place on this small deserted island, and a lot of it takes place inside of a prison, which is very claustrophobic, small. They brought back zombies this time. Oh, thank God. Which, it, I know. I, I missed them really bad. It was bad. Yeah. Um... And then one of the best parts is they did have co-op in Resident Evil Revelations 2. But Jesse, you just said you didn't like co-op. One of the characters actually has the ability to shoot. The other character literally can only use a flashlight. So it still brings that terrifying element of if you're playing as that character with a flashlight only, you're in some trouble. And then if you're playing as a character with a gun, you're in this, I have to protect this other person. So it, it makes the whole... Nervousness come back and throw what is so when you were in the middle of that explanation when you said one of you can only 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 one of you uses the gun, I swear the words that were coming out of your now, mouth max I thought was the other person controls the legs. I don't know why. I just saw that what? coming. Like and I just envisioned this little cartoon character flopping around where you're shooting this way, but your legs are coming up this yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. So um but it made for a much more, I thought, entertaining game and experience. And I remember playing that with uh, uh one of my friends at the time, and it was it was really enjoyable because literally all he could do with a flashlight is point out more ammo or keys we needed, but he needed my protection, and at the same time, and if any character dies, you guys lose, so you do have to protect this character. Um, so if you have a Switch, and you like Resident Evil, or you've been having that itch for a horror game, they're both, they're decently challengeable, challengeable, yeah, challenging games, this they're is not going so well. frustrating, and they're Super fun, and they're scary, and I think they're a fun choice for anybody. Which which one? Wait, which, which one had had the funky flashlight man and the gun? Okay, which one no, was like, that? That was Resident Evil Revelations Two. Revelations Two. So sort of like so the guy who gets the flashlight in Revelations Two mm -hmm. is kind of like when you're playing couch co-op as a kid with your buddy. Yep. And you invite them over to your house, <laughs> and they're the ones that get stuck with the off-brand controller. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? It's like the video game version of the off-brand controller. Like, yeah, we're gonna play uh, this awesome game on the uh, on the N64. Well, here's my also Nintendo 64 controller. With the and, rumble pack. And, yeah, with the rumble pack. And you get this. <laughs> and, it, <laughs> and it's just like... Uh, Extra buttons and Yeah, doesn't exactly. <laughs> it's just one of those... A like, terrible function yeah, that makes it. Exactly. exactly. That, that's, that, that's the Resident Evil version of the uh, off-brand the off -brand controller. I thought it was more like, you ever been playing a video game with somebody, but you're not actually playing it, so you're like, over there, over there. Exactly. Good times. Okay, I picked the game. It is Luigi's Mansion 3. So, the year was 2019, and a great <laughs> Luigi's Mansion game came. I don't know what's going on. No, I need I to mean, drink more you're, caffeine. You're, you're, you're good. It's a great choice. One, I was... I, was, I, can, I can pitch this. I'm I was saying. seriously debating picking Ghostbusters. Oh, uh, that would have been a good for one. For the Switch, because it was really good. But you, you got both in there. You got <laughs> Luigi yeah, and Ghostbusters. So... so. Luigi's Mansion 3, if you've never played a Luigi's Mansion game, stars Luigi, go figure, in, guess where? Mario's little A car, just kidding, in a mansion. And he has one weapon, a vacuum cleaner. It's him against the world, sucking ghosts like ghost suckers. What does that even mean? Anyway, mm. so the plot, basic plot, is... Uh, Mario, Luigi, Princess Peach, they all go on a vacation Toad. to Toad, yes, he's, a, he's there as well. They go on a vacation to a mansion, and things are not what they seem. Mm -hmm. You go in the mansion, and initially, it looks like it's going to be a splendid vacation. It's fantastic, beautiful mansion, bright colors. Indeed. But, you go to your room, you fall asleep, and when you wake up, something is off. Nothing looks like it should. Your friends aren't where they're supposed to be. Where'd As a matter go? of fact, they're missing. Everything's dark. There's rats. What do you do? Where do they you go? collect your weapon, which escapes me because I didn't prepare. So Poltergeist. we're just going to call it the Poltergeist. vacuum. Poltergeister. You ruined my joke. 
You jerk. <laughs> I didn't hear that. We're just gonna call it the Vacu Suck 2000. So Luigi gets the Vacu Suck 2000. Polter Gust. Joke ruining jerk. And he proceeds to ransack the mansion, sucking up ghosts. And what's cool about the third Luigi's Mansion, which the first two did not do, they, the first two Luigi's Mansions were very, like, this is a haunted mansion, every floor is a haunted mansion, solve different puzzles. So Correct. the puzzle aspect is still hardcore in Luigi's Mansion 3. But what's neat about this one is every floor is themed differently. That is true. There is a floor that's themed like a movie theater. There, you know, there's... Well, it's all plants. Exactly. So every floor is, a, is an interesting theme, so... Not, not that the first games were ever repetitive. Actually, I guess the second one does have some theming elements to yeah. it. But third, the third one, that was <clears throat> that was on 3DS. But the third one goes all in on the theming elements. It does. You know, what's always funny is we always talk every sequel kind of should try to uh, do what the first one did, but kind of yes. to a bigger, better level. Exactly. I, I feel like Luigi's Mansion 3 definitely was like... But I'm not really selling why the game is so great, other than the fact that the gameplay is fantastic and, and, and such. But the ambiance and the setting of that game is so well done. It's a, it's a scary, sp spooky game. No, I'd say it but is But, I mean, creepy. a kid can play it. You know, it's the kind of game where my five-year-old, for example, would be a little... Would be probably quite scared to play it. So it's scary enough because there's ghosts and whatnot. But yet my nine-year-old, he would probably be like, whoa, that's creepy. You know, uh, and he'll continue, you know, he'll keep playing, and maybe he'll have, like, one or two jump scares. But yeah, me, as an adult male, will play that same game and be like, oh, the, ambu the ambience here is, is, is awesome. It's, it's just spooky enough to, like, have that feel like, you know, when you're playing a good game and you just feel so engrossed in it, you become part of it. Yeah. Like, when you're playing a good RPG, you, you become fully invested in the surroundings around you. That's what this game does. From the moment you walk in that mansion, you feel like you're in that mansion. Because they, it's, it's Nintendo, and it's first party, so you know it's going to have that Nintendo quality of just... Secrets and everything. This corner. game is built perfectly. I mean, it's just floor to ceiling. Haha, <laughs> floor to ceiling, get it? We're in Luigi's Mansion. <laughs> it's, just, it's just done so well. You know, I've said this before about Nintendo N Nintendo games. It's a masterpiece. I said when I, when Jesse wasn't here last time for the last show until uh, I had to do yeah, this. Who was that guy in my chair, by the way? We got to talk about that. He was my brother. You never met him. He was in my chair. <laughs> uh, you know, I say that this that it's a masterpiece. Breath of the Wild, a masterpiece. See, Mario Odyssey, a masterpiece. You know, this game isn't a masterpiece. It's darn close to it. You know, it's a great first party Nintendo game. But boy, oh boy, did they hit a home run with. Just the setting, the puzzles, the feel to the game is just perfect. And if you haven't played it, you're doing yourself a disservice. Because you uh, need to strap on that vacuum suck I'm not gonna I'm not gonna play. I hate to disagree with you, but I am. I'm gonna call it a masterpiece. I think Luigi's Mansion Three one improves on every both games incredibly and it's one of those first party Nintendo games you need to own. You know what I mean? If you just bought a Switch for first party Nintendo games, Luigi's Mansion has got to be up there just because. Oh, oh, well, absolutely. It's not a, oh, well, there's, that, there's no doubt about that. It's it, just, it, I can't put it on the same plateau with like Breath of the Wild. It's an like argument that, but... I always say when people say something's overrated, like I'm here, Nintendo's overrated, there's a reason why. It's because they put out quality. People love their quality, so they're going to like it. So call it overrated or whatever you want. I think it's amazing. You get to be a masterpiece in my eyes, Luigi's Mansion. Wow. That was cute. <laughs> I feel adorable. All right. You do look nice in that hat. You should wear that more often. Thank you. Um, okay, so let's go to the voting. Is there need to be a voting, man? Yeah, there needs to be a vote. I agree. But will it be spooky? Oh, what? No. <laughs> I don't know what he was going with that. All, All right. right. Shall I vote first or shall you? Uh, I think that you should vote first, and I think you should smack down the game back into the earth, that which it came, smack the grave back into the ground. That's whence it came, for the one who is knocked out. All right. So me and Steve have had many debates. Sometimes we fold, sometimes we won't. Sometimes he folds, sometimes I fold. Sometimes we just like take it to the comments because we just can't agree um 
Steve always mentions something. He says sometimes when you go in with your feelings and your emotions, you get it to the face because feelings and emotions don't always make up for quality of the game. And at the end of the day, Steve was absolutely right in this circumstance. This is a day I will hold because he picked an amazing pick. As much as I love Resident Evil and I do love all the Resident Evil games, I do. I'm looking forward to that new one coming out, too. But with that being said, you don't play them. That's why it is. Like, but with that being said, Luigi's Mansion is fun. I, I hate to be so cliche, but it is fun for all ages. It was an incredible game. It's something that I picked up and didn't put back down until I completed it, which Steve knows is not something I do all the time. This is uh, true. You got to smack down your game, by the way. You got to smash it into the ground. I'm getting there. I didn't oh, want to hurt it. It's all right. Feelings. Get you up. But in this case, as much as I love you, Resident Evil, and Resident Evil 2 Revelations, I'm going to have to go with my boy Luigi over here. Green Mario, you win. Nice job. Thank you. All right, now I will vote. First, let me preface this by saying, I have never played those games. <laughs> however, okay. however, I do know a decent amount about them. Um, you know, I kind of played dumb to an extent when he was doing his explanation, and, I mean, that was only partially, you know, real. I do know... Some basic storyline elements and things like that. I know what critics have given the ratings. I know what the port qualities are, you know, as far as, you know, if it's a worthy port, blah, blah, blah. So, I have heard criticisms that the port quality is not quite up to snuff compared to, like, the version on the Xbox and the PlayStation. So, I don't, I don't mean graphics. I just mean, like, the quality of the port in general. Right. Um, so, that is a big X uh, or, a, or a cross through the game, you know, in my head for that. Um, X, I'm going to give it to you. Yeah, he is. It's true. What? <laughs> um, anyway, so, I mean, when you just look at it, you know, at face value, a spectacular first-party Nintendo Switch game, Luigi's Mansion, or a series of games that has had its ups and downs in its question mark quality games, um, coupled with the fact that the quality of this version of the game is subpar. Uh, I'm going to have to go with my pick, Luigi's Mansion 3. I'm going to take this thing. And wait a minute, did it ever come back out of the ground? No, it's still in there, man. I'm going to take this thing, and I'm going to put it right back where the dirt where it came from. Woof! Oh boy, oh boy. Man. Maybe, we should, maybe we shouldn't release this video. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. We went, off the, we, went off, we went off the rails like 20 minutes ago. No, I enjoyed it. Okay. Uh, well... The winner by TKO, <gasps> Luigi's Mansion 3, and his Vacu Suck 2000, or was it 3000, Poltergeist? 3000 is part know. 3. All right, fair enough. Okay, well, that's going to bring this episode of Show and Tell to a close. Oh, yeah. Do you have anything to add, my good friend? Always, always, like I always say, anything you want us to talk about, anything fun. Go ahead and shoot it in the comment section. Indeed. We'll talk about almost anything. Don't forget to give this Steve's video a like. Likes, dislikes. A comment. And subscribe if you're not. Also register on guildhallforum.com. Check out our awesome Patreon. Link it in the description. Check out our awesome apparel and variousness in our swag shop. And, and I know we said it before, but don't forget to comment. Steve is always really good about responding, and I'm always good about reading his response. <laughs> Well, that just about does it for this episode of Show and Tell. So, for the Adventurers Guild, I'm Steve. Still Jesse. And we will see you next time. Ooh.